Hi everyone, welcome to On the Other Hand. I'm Ariane Zersher and today I'm going to be demonstrating the feather stitch. I hope you'll join me as we explore this stitch together. Grab something to stitch with, some wool, a needle, some thread. Don't forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button and the little bell that shows up to get email notifications. I love hearing from you. Leave me comments in the comment section and don't forget to check out the description section where I leave links to all the different threads and tools that I use within this tutorial. If you'd like to share these videos, please do. If you haven't done so already, I'd love for you to come and follow along with me on my blog where art and life meet, which is where I muse about whatever strikes me going on in New York City. I cover a lot of different topics. You can find me at whereartandlifemeet.com. Also, if you're on Instagram, it's the at symbol and then my name, Ariane Zersher. Grab something to stitch with, grab a needle and some thread, and let's stitch together. I'll demonstrate the feather stitch, which this is, uh, in a silken pearl. I'm using my Mermaid Dances silken pearl on a number 24 chenille needle. I just drew a little square. If you think of it as a little square, you're going to come up on the lower right corner of that square, pull your thread through, and then come up diagonally above on the upper left corner of your square and come across to the upper right corner of the square and pull your thread through, making sure that this thread is underneath so you're going to get a little V like that. Now you're going to come across as though there were another square directly above. And you're going to put your needle and pull your thread through. Then you're going to come down as though this were a square. And you're going to put your needle down into the lower right corner. Come up, pull your needle through. Go across and up. For the next stitch. Now you're going to come down. Let me keep these really small. Then you're going to go up. Down. Above, so my daughter's phone is ringing. She forgot to turn the ringer off. And you just keep doing this as far as you as you want, and then whenever you want, you can just end it. I'm going to do the feather stitch in a 3.5 millimeter silk ribbon. It's the same idea. I come up on my work. I'm going to imagine that this is a little square. And I'm going to come over here and then I'm going to come just vertical to, to where my thread emerges. And I make my first little V and I come up here just above it and now I'm going to go down come up above go down up go down and I can end it right here if I want to keep going I can try to make these really tiny
That's my feather stitch. Using the ribbon, there's a silken pearl. I'll do it in a heavier weight thread so you can see what it looks like in something quite heavy. I'm using this soft painter soft cotton grandma moses i've threaded up a size 18 chenille i'm going to start with my first little stitch i'm going to go up and now i'm going to come down above Go above, come across, go above. Cross, above, cross, above, and I'll end right there. Another way to do this, if you want it to go vertically and you don't want to have it going off diagonally, is to draw four lines. So I've drawn four in my chalk. You are going to start here, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to come up to the middle line. Then I'm going to skip over, not to this line, but to the outer line, and I'm going to come up to this middle. If I were starting out, this is where my thread would be emerging from. And in this way, you just keep going up, alternating the Vs between your four lines. And then you can just end it by tacking that last V down. And that would be how you would do it if you wanted it to go vertically and not do it this way, which is on the diagonal. So I'm going to show that again. You have a ruler. You can draw I'm keeping these pretty close together using the Aurora thread again on my 18 chenille. For a left-handed person, you're going to come on the right-hand most line. You're going to skip that line and you're going to come over here, come back to the middle, and that's going to be your first V. Now you're going to skip this line and you're going to go over to this one, come up to that middle line. These lines that I've drawn are a little under an eighth of an inch apart. You can make them even smaller. Come here, bring my needle up. Skip this one. So there it is. Uh, this is the silken pearl. This is the silk ribbon. This is the soft cotton. And there's the soft cotton and this is the Aurora. I'm going to show you how you can do a, a meandering feather stitch using the same four row concept, but just having it sort of curved. So 
It's the same concept. I'm going to come down on my outer right line. I'm going to skip the next chalk line, and I'm going to come right here, coming up on that middle one, and pull my thread through. Now I'm going to skip this line. I'm going to go over to the outer line that's just across from where this thread is emerging, and I come up onto that next line. I pull my thread through, and now I do the same on the other side. And then I come up on the next one, and I continue in this way. Now I can, I can make these closer together, or I can make them farther apart, depending on what I want and how I want this to look. I can also make my chalk lines really close together. These are about mm, not quite an eighth of an inch, but I could make them as close as a sixteenth of an inch if I wanted. You can see the difference as I decreased the distance and the length of my legs. It just kind of now meanders along. The other thing is, is that of course now you can come back and with a separate thread you could couch here or you could put little French knots here or colonial knots. You could do a little bouillon coming out like this and then do a French knot in the middle or a detached chain or a slip detached chain. There are so many different things that you could do with this feather stitch as the base, combining other stitches that you know how to do and adding to this. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. And if you haven't done the feather stitch before, give it a try because I think it it can be applied to a great many different things and different ways in which you can use it and use it in combination with other stitches. Don't forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button, click on the bell that pops up after you subscribe for email notifications, and I love hearing from you, so leave me comments in the comments section, and don't forget to check out the description section because anytime I use a thread, I will put the link to that thread in the description section so that all you have to do is click on the link. It will take you directly to the page on Sue Spargo's website where you can purchase that specific thread. I also provide links for tools. So I will provide a link for the chalk pencil that I use, the ruler that I use, all the things that I use in a video. That's always going to be where I place the links so that you can find those things easily in the description section. Until next time, here's to stitching together. <laughs>